Hey guys, welcome back to Titan Vans. I'm Matt, and today we're gonna to be going through a detailed walkthrough of our classic build-out on a 144 Sprinter chassis. So first thing we're gonna do, do a quick walk around the van, show you some of the exterior features that we've built into the classic, and then we'll jump on the inside and kind of show you all the uh, appliances and the built-in uh, features there. So start right here in the back. We've incorporated a waterproof exterior outlet in the vehicle. Uh, so just a little flip up hood there and a uh, 120 volt GFCI outlet. And this is controlled from inside the van so you can turn it off and on. The reason we mount it here in this location is so that you can actually still operate the slider door and it ends well before the outlet. So any plug-ins, extension cords, they're not gonna interfere with the functionality of the slider door. Swinging around here to the back. We have our shore power plug. The shore power is what allows you to both charge your battery and with uh, the inverter that we use, it allows you to distribute that shore power signal to your entire system automatically. So the inverter that we use is an inverter slash charger and it has this built-in transfer switch that will allow that signal to be um, be found by the inverter. It'll recognize that power coming in and then it will bypass the inverter so the inverter is actually no longer inverting and will distribute that signal to all of your outlets that you can then control with our um, rocker breaker panel. The shore power just uses a simple extension cord standard plug so no fancy adapters or cords needed. Try and just keep it as simple as possible and with this you can plug in run your hot water heater induction cooktop all your lights and it will charge the battery and again have that transfer function built in so around the side standard on our classic build is an aluminous side mount ladder so nice burly ladder allows you to access the roof to do service clean off your solar panels get snow off the roof during those winter months on top of the van we have a max air fan and a 300 watt monocrystalline solar panel so we have three ways to charge the battery on our rigs. We have shore power, which is the plug on the bumper, solar on the roof, and the third way is when you're actually driving. So we have a battery isolator switch that actually allows you to charge while the vehicle is running. And when you turn off the vehicle, it will disconnect the two batteries, isolating them so that there's no way for you to drain one battery or the other. One additional functionality of that battery isolator that we use is it actually allows you to manually connect or disconnect the batteries as needed. And what that would be used for is, for instance, if you had your headlights on and you killed your cranking battery, the one that starts your engine, you'd actually be able to manually flip that switch to connect your auxiliary battery, the one that we install for the, the back of the house system. It would connect those two batteries and you can actually jumpstart yourself. So no more bug you know, um, breaking out the jumper cables and finding somebody to jump you. You have a battery in there and we give you the really easy option just to flick that on, connect the batteries, jump start, and back on the road. So nice little built-in feature there. Swing back around to the, uh, the slider door here and we'll show you what's going on, on the inside. All right, so inside our classic rig, so lighting is super important to us. Uh, we spent a lot of time developing the lighting, coming up with some innovative solutions. So we have two different types of lighting in the classic. We have our general lighting and we have our task specific lighting. The general lighting is comprised of two uh, sets of lights. We have our overhead lights. You can see six puck lights that are mounted in the ceiling. So those are our overhead lights. And then we have our cove lighting. So the cove lighting is some nice strip lighting that's run along the side of the van. Gives you some nice ambient lighting without being direct in your face. Both of these sets, our general sets of lighting, are controllable via three switches. The first set of switches you saw me operate here. So these are just push button switches. So we have controls here at the slider door. We have two buttons up by the driver by the stick shift, so it gives you control of the lights. If you need to swing around, jump in the back of the rig, or you forget to turn lights on, 
easily control them from the driver's seat. And then we have two switches back by the bed so you can control them uh, when, you're, when you're in the bed or getting in and out. So we just wanna give you access to those at any time. All three sets of switches function the same way. One push to turn the lights off and on. So that's both for the cove and for the overhead. And then press and hold to dim. So when I press those two buttons, we can dim the light down to a nice low setting for nighttime use. And what that allows you to do, um, set the level where you want it. And what's really nice about these dimmer modules is when we click them off again, so press once, when we turn them back on, they actually go to the last known state. So the dimmer modules actually have memory in them uh, so that they will always remember that last known lighting level. So in the middle of the night, you turn the lights down nice and low, you get up in the, you know, you turn them off, get up in the middle of the night, turn your lights back on. They're not gonna go full brightness on you. So they'll remember that. So really nice, simple feature. And then press and hold again here to go back to full brightness. So that's our general lighting, again, controllable from three different places in the van. You can see here, uh, we have tracks into the floor. So this is an l track system that's bolted through the rail, actually the frame rail of the van. So it's very, very strong. And this is what we actually use to mount our two-person removable bench seat. So that's an upgrade package. It's plug and play, no tools required. It comes in and out of the van and gives you two three-point harnesses, DOT-approved bench seats. The bench seats do not turn into beds, um, and that's because of that DOT approval. They're a little bit stronger frames, and so you know that function of actually folding back would negate that, that safety. You can see the next kind of big appliance that we have in here is the galley. So the galley is another one of our upgradable packages. Every classic comes with the utility panels necessary to hook a galley up. So there's no need to change the van. It's a plug and play component, fully removable. So you can buy it with or without the van and at any time you can upgrade or remove it at any time. If you want some more info on how that guy works, we have a video on our website that goes into detail of how that comes in and out. So check that out. Up top, we have our overhead uh, cabinetry. So this is another one of our removable components. So here we have marine rim latches. So just press and they will open and then simply pull up and we have some nice uh, gas struts to actuate some automatic lift doors. The overhead cabinet is also fully removable, can be purchased with or without the Classic and it can be added to any Classic at any time. It utilizes four star knobs, two in the ceiling, one on each side and then two star knobs actually mounted through the back which you can actually see kind of tucked up underneath here so just loosen the knobs pop the cabinet out you can take it in and out if you need some extra room uh, but yeah it gives you a lot of nice storage up here very strong and uh on this rig we actually added some under cabinet lighting so this is one of our task specific lighting so it gives you some nice lighting right to your galley and this can be added to any one of our overhead uh, cabinets as far as our appliances go for wintertime use we use a wabasto 2000 st diesel furnace taps right into the gas tank so our rigs are fully off the grid and what we tell our clients is the only thing you have to worry about is keeping fuel in the tank. The solar takes care of your battery and the battery powers pretty much the entire system. And the furnace is the only thing that is powered off of a, a separate fuel source and produces a ton of heat for wintertime um, use. I've slept in negative 20 degrees and this furnace definitely took the edge off. We can always upgrade it to the bigger unit if you're gonna be doing a lot of wintertime uh, camping and ski trips. And the bigger unit will keep it nice and cozy in here. And the smaller unit does a great job. It'll take the edge off in those single to negative digits. Um, and you know, around freezing temperature, it does perfectly well. So it kinda just depends on your use and you know, your known uh, sports, you know, kind of what size you'd want to go with there. So that's standard. The diesel furnace is a, is a standard. It's not an upgrade. It's a standard appliance that we add to our rigs as well as the swivel seats. You can see here, this passenger is already swiveled and the driver's seat here, uh, also comes standard with a swivel. So every classic includes that. Moving towards the back, 
We have a 20 gallon water tank tucked underneath the driver's side cabinet. So 20 gallons of fresh water and we have a spray down shower off the back that we can show you. This first cabinet here is just empty. Gives you some nice storage, uh, food, pots and pans, clothing, whatever you want in there. Um, on this one, we actually have added a hot water heater. So the hot water heater is a upgrade package for us. Again, designed to be plug and play. All the plumbing is run, all the holes are cut in all of our classics, whether you add the hot water heater or not. So it can be added on later on with minimal effort. It is an electric hot water heater. So it runs off the inverter, so it pulls the energy, comes from the battery, is converted by the inverter from 12 volt DC, direct current, to 120 volt AC, alternating current, and it powers the hot water heater. The hot water heater is four gallons. It heats the water up to about 185 degrees, which is way hotter than you'd ever want coming out of your faucet or shower. And then what it actually has built into it is a pre-mixing valve. And the pre-mixing valve takes some of that cold water and mixes it with that extremely hot water to create normal hot water. So you can stretch that four gallons of hot water to six to eight gallons, kind of depending on your, um, your hot water comfort level. So all of the cabinets in our classic have um, these slam latches or the rim latches like you saw in the overhead cabinet, the slam latches to keep everything secure. Really cool feature that we have on this uh, driver's side cabinet are these removable um, parts here that we developed that can be customized for whatever you're hauling. So this one we designed is a ski rack. Very quickly, I'll show you how these work. You just lift up and these slide right out. So these are what we call our kerf mounts. So we have the receptacles mounted on the faceplate with this in. So simply slide in, push down to lock in place. So this one's for two, two, um, two ski setups there, but we also have uh, developed a ton of different types. So this one is actually for four different surfboards. You could also do skis or snowboards in this vertically, uh, but simply switch it out, slide it in, and push it down to lock it in place. And there you go, that easy to switch in and out. Uh, no tools, no muss, you know, very inexpensive components. And so we designed these custom for our clients here um, to make sure we can, you know, accommodate all of their, um, their carrying needs. So in the back of this guy here is actually the water pump, which I'll show you when we come around to the back end, a little bit easier to see there. We'll jump over here to the driver's side, or excuse me, the passenger side here. So on the passenger side, we have additional storage. So we actually have two adjustable bamboo shelves that can be moved up and down. And they have screws going up through the brackets so it keeps them nice and snug when traveling. But they are adjustable depending on what you need to carry. So we have pegs in the side here and you can adjust these about every inch and a half, two inches, so you can really dial it in for whatever your needs are. Moving back here, we have the inverter cabinet. So you can have some additional storage in here. Uh, the inverter, this is our Xantrex XC2000. The inverter is great inverter. We're really happy with this product. It is an inverter charger. So that's kind of what I was talking about with that shore power option so when you plug in the shore power the inverter recognizes the incoming signal and will use a built-in transfer switch to transfer that power and it will charge the battery simultaneously so what an inverter it's kind of and its primary function is to take that dc current and convert it to 120 volt ac so you can run all of your appliances that you've ever plugged in so that's hair dryer blender toaster microwave, any of those things that you've ever plugged into a house in those three pronged outlets, that's what this is supplying the power for. So up here on top, we have our control panel. So this is the brains of the system here. This is how you control the entire system. So for the 120 volt power, so say you want to turn the, the hot water heater on, simply click the inverter on. It'll run a systems check. 
So it gives you some information here too. So it'll tell you battery voltage. It'll tell you the load once we actually get some stuff turned on. Now we have this little symbol here shows, this is the battery symbol. It shows it is now inverting from the battery to our AC signal. Now up here we have our main breaker. So we flip our main breaker on. So that now just, uh, so this is what's inverting, but we need this breaker panel here to actually distribute the power to our different components. So for the outlet outside, uh, that waterproof outlet and a couple of the additional outlets back here by the bed. Simply flip, flick on, and now all the outlets have power. Turn them off. Turning the hot water heater on. You might have noticed that the lights dim just slightly, so now we are actually powering the hot water heater directly off the battery. So the hot water heater is pulling about 150, 130 watts. You can see it pulled the voltage of the battery down just slightly, but that'll run for about 30 minutes to create that four gallons of really hot water. Simply flick the switch, hot water heater turns off. Now, if you add the galley package, again, the, the Classic comes standard with this unit and the galley is always wired up and it always has a breaker panel associate or a breaker switch associated with it. So if we wanna turn the galley on, simply flip the switch. And that beep you just heard is actually the induction cooktop. So if we swing over here to the uh, top of the galley, you can see we have a built-in flush mounted single burner induction cooktop. This is made by Furion, pulls about 1500 watts. And you simply, once you've flicked the galley switch on, you can turn it on and you can select either heat or temperature, and then you can adjust them. You can set timers and you can also lock it if you have a child safe. Simply press to turn off, and it's that simple. Induction is a great um, stove option uh, for, for our vans. We use a really robust electrical system. The induction cooktops will um, heat things up very, very quickly. They're very easy to adjust the temperature up and down. And so although this is a 1500 watt max unit, very rarely is somebody using this on high because it just puts out way too much heat. Uh, so most people are running this on, you know, on a scale of one to 10, probably on a two to three range. So, you know, it's a 1500 watt max, but you're probably only pulling about 300 watts when you're actually running the unit for cooking. Um, so induction works by magnets. And so you have to have a pan that a magnet will stick to. So it has to be what's called a ferrous material. So as long as a magnet sticks to it, it'll work with our cooktop. Um, and so yeah, these are really great units. They're really easy to use, easy to clean, highly recommend them. They're very safe. One of the nice features are about these guys is as soon as you take the pan off, within a matter of seconds, you can actually touch the cooktop. So it cools down extremely quickly because it's not actually getting hot. It's using magnets to actually just heat the pan itself. So very cool functionality there. So you get a lot of your counter space back almost immediately as soon as you're done cooking. You don't have to wait for something to cool down. You don't have hot things. You know, the flame potential is a lot, is a lot lower with this kind of unit. The sink in our, ga in our galley unit here, very spacious. It's actually 12 and a half inches by 16 inches by nine inches deep. So really large, gives you a good capacity. Uh, we're not big fans of little sinks. We don't like doing dishes as it is. So we try and make it as easy as possible. The faucet, um, pretty simple stainless steel controlled faucet. It does have a pull down sprayer and can be either in a spray mode or in a kind of standard um, flow mode. Um, yeah, and let's talk about the bed real quick. So that's our galley. The bed uh, is one of our custom designs in house. It's called our by slide design. It's very simple to use. Simply loosen the latches underneath. So we have four latches in total. So loosen the latches. You can either remove them or just slide them back. Either one works. So once loosened, simply grab the, the handles here on the pull lever and slide the bed out. Let's get these parts out of the way. So you can see our by slide design is fully aluminum, uh, slides really nice and easy. The um, 
very strong. So we've uh, actually tested this with over a thousand pounds on it, held no problem. So it'll handle just about anybody on here. What's really nice about this lofted bed platform design is that you can store your bikes underneath with your bed out. So that's what's really nice. This, this rig is obviously designed for those with adventure in mind. So those who they bike one day, they kayak the next, they're rock climbing, they wanna roll a motorcycle in. So with this design, it allows you for a lot of different functionality really quickly. So once you slide it out, you can flip the mattress over, uh, creates a nice full bed. It's actually just over a queen size bed. So very spacious, really comfortable. We use some high-end foam in our bed mattresses. So yeah, it's a really nice bed. If you guys want some more details on this, we actually have a full video of exactly how our bed works on our website. So check that out if you guys want a little bit more of how this guy comes in and out. So we'll slide it back. And let's swing around to the back of the van. We'll kind of show you what's going on in the trunk there. And uh, yeah, got some cool stuff. So underneath the bed here, we have installed some load lights. So we have switches to control the load lights, both back here using those same types of switches. And we also have a switch on the front end of the cabinet that allows you to control while you're inside the van. On the back end here, we have our spray down shower and our kind of our water fill slash control system. So starting from the top here, we have our water inlet. So utilize a, a standard garden hose fitting to uh, fill. It does have a check valve in it. So if you're going up really steep hills, you won't have all that water back flowing out of the back of the van. Here we have our shower sprayer and our shower control valve. So this allows us to uh, control both the temperature by rotating left and right and the flow rate by pushing the lever left and right. And the sprayer pulls out very simple. It's about a six foot hose, so you can wash down bikes, dogs, paddle boards, humans, you know, whatever you got going on. Down below here, uh, we have our control valve for the water system. So this is actually how we either turn the water off um, to the system, or shut the water off, turn the water on so that it can be distributed by the water pump, uh, or drain the system entirely. So it's a three-way valve. So in its current mode, it's in the on state. We can turn it straight up and down this way. This is off now. And if I turn it again, you'll actually see some water start draining out of the bottom. So this is actually where our drain valve is mounted in the Sprinter and the classic design. So quickly able to drain your system to winterize it. Uh, so we'll just leave it right back on the on there. In the back of the cabinet here is where we have our water pump and all of our valves. So we have a 2.9 gallon per minute sure flow pump. Uh, this is the fresh water pump. So it pulls water out of the water tank and pressurizes both the galley and the, the shower in the back here. And then we have control valves um, for all of our different appliances. So we can manually shut off individual appliances such as the galley. We can shut off water to the hot water heater and we can shut off water to the spray shower all independently. So if you need to service something, if you just want to shut something down to make sure it doesn't get kicked on, you have control over each individual appliance. So to view the water tank when you're filling up, uh, it's a 20 gallon capacity. It's actually designed to go over the top of the wheel well. We actually custom designed it in-house and that's how we maintain our cabinetry profiles as tight as we do. There's an overflow on the front of the tank. So as you fill up, it will um, it'll fill until max capacity and it'll actually start draining up and over and out the bottom of the van. So you're never going to flood the van. You know, if you overfill it, it's just going to be dumping water out the bottom of the van. And then to know when it is full or what your water level is, we have this site um, slot here. So simple cut out of the wood and you can actually see the water tank through the back. But it's difficult to see, so what we've installed actually is a backlight. Um, and so we usually in, you know, get the light going. If you give it a little bit of a shake there, a lot of times you can see where the water level is. So you can see it moving up and down right there. And then, yeah, just push the button off, turn the light off, and that button is located right here next to all the water, um, 
water fills and controls there. On the passenger side here, we have our control panel. So our utility control panel is kind of the, the heart of the system and you don't really have to access it too much unless you're, you need to service something, you wanna shut it down, you're gonna be leaving for a month or two and you just wanna turn the whole system off. Uh, so here we have all the fuses easily accessed and labeled. So if you ever have any issues, quickly be able to diagnose and, and fix the problem here. Up top, we use our Victron solar charge controller. And these are actually Bluetooth uh, compatible. So you can actually um, link in with your phone to get all your specs, change the settings. Uh, we pre-program them before they leave our shop, but sometimes it's nice to get in there if you wanna just kinda of tweak something, change the colors, display brightness, and so forth. Down here, we have our four-way battery switch. So this is what allows you to either shut the system down. You could also run the system just off solar so you can isolate the battery. You can run it just off the battery if you ever needed to work on the solar system or you can run it as it currently is where the solar and the battery and the entire system are connected. So that's kind of where this is gonna stay 95% of the time, but we like to give people the option to control their system as they need. This little red box right here is actually our large fuses. So we have a 250 amp fuse that is in between the battery and the inverter. And we have a 150 amp fuse that is between the battery and the alternator from that uh, cable that runs from the, from the engine so you can charge while you're driving. And so that's our control panel there. If you wanna fully remove the bed, we simply release these two additional levers here. So we have the identical to the front levers. Release the lever here, release it here, and this entire platform lifts out. Weighs about 60 pounds. Uh, we have a good time lapse on one of our classic videos that kind of shows how that works. Recommend using two people to take it in and out, but it's uh, very robust, and when it is out, you get your full van back very, very quickly. And so it gives you a lot of options to be able to roll motorcycle, snowmobile, ATV, or even carry those fridges or cabinets if you're doing some, some homework. So it really is a do-it-all van. Uh, you can use it as the work truck during the week, use it as the adventure rig during the weekend. We've tried to design something that works for a wide range of people and really like meets the demands of our clients uh, who are multi-sport people. Being here in Colorado, we got a lot of athletes and we want to make sure that our, our product works day in, day out, no matter what they're doing. So hope you enjoy the video. Leave your comments. We'll try and do our best to answer any other questions and keep posted for more. Thanks for watching.